Good Friday to you, Bethany. Today we're going to look at Mark's resurrection story. And Mark is a little bit different. Now you might look at your, your book and look go to chapter 16 and you might see that, oh, there's a shorter ending of Mark and then there's a longer ending of Mark. Most authorities believe these are added much later because some scribe didn't like how Mark ended his story of, of Christ. So we're going to just read what is considered by all, almost all scholars the, the original ending of Mark, how the story really ended, and talk about that. Mark 16, 1 through 8. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James, and Solomon brought spices so that they may, might go and anoint him. And very early on the first day of the week, when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb. They had been saying to one another, Who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance to the tomb? When they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had already been rolled back. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in white robes sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. But he said to them, Do not be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has been raised. He is not here. Look, there is the place they laid him. But go and tell his disciples and Peter that he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. So they went out and fled from the tomb, and for terror and amazement had seized them, and they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. They fled from the tomb, and for terror and amazement had seized them. They said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. That's kind of a, 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 a difficult ending, but we know that's not the ending. Because if that was the ending, we wouldn't be talking about this because the women wouldn't have gone and told the disciples. Uh, Jesus wouldn't have appeared to the disciples. We know there was more, but, but Mark stops that, his story, in the midst of fear. Now, Mark is writing in a hurry. He's writing at about the time of the fall of Jerusalem. And so he uses words like immediately, a lot, in his story, trying to push the story along. And he's trying to get the story out to his church before they face some cataclysm, or maybe they've already faced a cataclysm and the fall of Rome, they're trying, he's trying to get the word to them that they can carry out to the people. So he writes it very quickly, very briefly. Matter of fact, a good portion of Mark's gospel is in Matthew and Luke, and then they have their own additional words. But this part of them being afraid, they told nobody anything, you can kind of understand why some early scribes would have added to that, would have added more information. But what I like to look at is when I read that, I think, wait a minute, let's go back and read this again and see what this is about. And so you go back to the beginning of the book and you begin reading again the story that Mark has written down. And it says, the beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. And then you start reading it again. And it becomes something that you continue to read like that. The women were afraid, and then you go back to beginning of the good news. And the idea that I always carried with me when I've read Mark is that you now are witnesses to this. You now are witnesses to this resurrection. So now it's in your hands to share the gospel, to let others know about the love of Christ. To let others know that Christ is risen. He's risen indeed, hallelujah. See, we are Easter people. And what that means, not only do we have the faith and the life and the forgiveness that we receive from Christ defeating death and sin, but we also have the calling to be Easter people. To go out and proclaim God's love to the world, to go out and proclaim that Christ is risen to the world through our words and actions to live as Easter people. But all too often, amazement, 
and terror fill our lives. Fear for some reason or one reason or another, maybe fear of not being viewed as, as normal or maybe fear of being ostracized or maybe fear of not knowing what to say. Whatever the fear may be, it holds us back and we don't share. And the word doesn't get spread to our neighbors. And our neighbors go without hearing the good news of Jesus Christ. You know, we don't have to have a theology degree to, to share the gospel. The best sharing of the gospel is your own relationship. How has Christ impacted your life? How has Christ guided you in your life? How has Christ been your good shepherd? What story do you have of your faith, of your life with Christ? What has guided you in your life? Freddy, stop. Sorry. What leads your life in Christ? And that's what you share. My story is when my friend Harry invited me to church. And then somehow the Spirit worked through the sermon to finally get God's word into my ears and into my mind that I could start believing. And I have that story to where I could tell it in two minutes, like I just did, in 30 seconds actually, or I can tell it very long and it's a 45 minute long sermon. The reason I have that so that I can share with other people God's love in my life. So what's your story? What's your story of life with Christ? How do you live your life in Christ? How has Christ changed your life? Now, you might know your story, but maybe you're uncomfortable telling it. So what you can do is go into your bathroom or go into your bedroom, wherever you might have a mirror, and stand and tell your story to yourself until you're comfortable enough to share it with your neighbors. Because a neighbor someday or a friend someday or family someday will come to you and ask you, how do you deal with this? And all of a sudden your story will come to mind and you'll know it. Because our story with Christ, how Christ has lived in our lives, how Christ had brought us to life is the gospel that we carry. Mark, Matthew, Luke, John, they had their gospel, their story that they carry. Paul, James had their story that they carry. All the authors and witnesses of the, Old, of the New Testament had their story to carry. And you too have a story to carry with you. The story of the cross in your life. Yeah. The story of Christ in your life. Carry that, carry that story into the world for others to hear. Have a marvelous weekend. We'll see you on Sunday. God's blessings.